um, with Matthew that somebody went to go chew on chew the cud with Rick about a call that he made, and he literally sat there and waved him off, and they turned around and walked away. You don't see that that often. Well, and a lot of times that isn't <clears> – <throat> it wasn't just Rick making that call. If there was a call handed down that needed to be made and he made that call, it wasn't his decision. Mm-hmm. But he – you know what? This is his job. This is what it is. How many times before race savers do we see Rick put his flags down and walk out on the track and you – you all know the stroll when he'd go out to the inside oh, yeah. of turn three, yep. and it was somebody's getting moved because they're not listening. Yeah, yep. yep. Well, and it, it, what I thought was cool about him, and it's just those little things you see growing up. You remember people doing things. I remember Bill Arnold when he was coming out of the flag stand on the track to you know penalize the driver. <laughs> you know he let coming him know. down out of that flag yeah, stand. Coming, when Bill was coming <laughs> out of the flag stand, you know it was getting real. He got yeah. everybody's attention. So <laughs> he'd come down the flag stand. They'd stand there in the front stretch. They'd come at him at turn four. He'd point. He'd tap his backside and point to the back. And I remember watching Rick do that, thinking, he got that from Bill. You know, just those little things, you know. Yeah. Like they'd come by and he'd point, tap his back, and go to, you know, point to the back of the pack. That, did, that didn't mean back it in. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. But, you know, um, it's going to be it's gonna be different not having him out there for, you know, over two decades. Uh, he was a staple. Wow. He was, uh, you know, I don't know anybody that was going to say a bad word about him. I mean. There's nothing bad to say about well, the man. That's, no. That's the thing is I think you, the three of us knew that Rick had passed, but we didn't say Well, out of respect from the family that yeah. asked us not to say anything, exactly. we, you know, right. we didn't, you know. And then, <clears throat> but we could, what well, once word broke through another channel that I'm a part of, I just could tell when I looked out at the crowd and I saw a couple people, it was mm-hmm. like, yeah, and, and how, hard, how hard it hit them. And, I mean, it's it's hard to put into words how much I mean I I talk all the time on the radio but putting my emotions into words to share with the listeners it's about this. it's a hard thing to do it, it's, <clears throat> it's it is and you know Moxie put up a little thing for him on on and I want to know where did you get that photo I'll tell you right now I got that photo Doc Rick is one of those guys he was not one to take photos if you got a photo or his of Rick, hat well, off, or his hat off. <laughs> and it, that is the one time i think i've ever seen rick without his hat on well you can you can credit doc's photos for that you know doc is he you don't Corey, turn. you asked doc for a picture and, and that's the one he picked is i that did right? i sent doc a text said hey buddy do you have a good photo of rick that we can use and he says hold on couldn't that couldn't have been a more perfect photo absolutely yeah. Honoring scripted, the flag, you know, you know, just, yeah. yeah yeah and uh doc you know was one of those guys that if it's a candid shot he did it. That's a great one right there. And that's he yeah. sent us that photo to put up on Moxie to, to to honor Rick. And thank you, Doc. I thought it was very cool. Yeah, you know, very I cool. how appropriate was that? And um, it's uh, it's okay. a good photo. She can get away with that. <clears throat> so yeah, <laughs> you're lucky. <laughs> Walk in the studio like that. Get your leg broke. Uh, so or shot. Um, you know, it's just it's one of those deals. It's yeah. sad. We're gonna miss him. It's it's a bad thing for everybody. And, uh, again, to his family and, and those that were closest to him, you know, we send our condolences and Absolutely. our best wishes. And, um, it's going to be hard to replace replace him if you can replace somebody like that. You can't. No. Nope. Yeah, you truly can't. You truly can't in situations like that. I mean, there's a guy that knew his job, did it well, and was dedicated to the sport, to was the fans, to the drivers. Every single week. You know, the pick. Yeah, he was. He was. I don't, I don't know him. if he <clears throat> ever wasn't there. No. Uh-oh. Was that your computer? That wasn't me. Hmm. Wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I love it. So, you know, um, something else I wanted to talk about that I thought was, I was actually approached with. Um, what do you think about this idea? This guy calls me up and says, "Hey, Corey, I need your help with something. I need you and Mox and Media to kind of help me out this year. I've got this idea. Tell me what you think." He told me what he thought, and I kind of sat there for a couple seconds, and I said, are you serious? How did you come up with that? That is fantastic. I mean, the fans are going to love this. So, Dan Dival, okay, not only does he step up to put the money up for the late model division, $5,000 of his own money, this is what he's doing this year. The super sport car that he brought to the car show, beautiful ride. He is going to call that his charity car this year. Oh, that's right. That's right. Here's the deal. Final details and actual format of how this is going to go down are still being 
worked out. Worked out, finalized on exactly how he wants to do it. But here's the gist of it, okay? He's going to take that car to the track for the Super Sport cars. He's going to challenge the crowd every single week. He's going to challenge the fans, whether it's 250 or whether it's $500, okay? He's going to put up X amount of dollars. He is going to challenge the crowd to match him, okay? If... If the crowd will match that amount of money, Dan is going to start at the back of the pack of every Super Sport feature. And if he wins, he's going to donate all that money, the fans and his, to a different local charity every single week. Probably predetermined before each race, I, I would imagine. During the week, yeah. yeah, we'll yeah. Pre- we'll, we will predetermine that. <clears throat> maybe, um, maybe affiliated with the 50-50 or something like that. Who knows? Uh, however, we're gonna do however it. He works that he, out. Uh, that's that's cool. He is big on giving back. That's that is so cool. He is big on giving back, and and you know he's one of those guys. <laughs> you know, if you don't know Dan Dival, let me tell you something. You, you look think at that he guy, was nuts? You look at that guy, and you think, ooh. You know, if you're if you're the average person, that room. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that, that guy looks mean. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't make that guy mad. Yeah, he's one of those guys. When he, first impression, don't run into him in a dark alley. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and he's one of those guys that he just doesn't open up really easy either. I mean, no. you've you got to know him before he'll start, you know. So the first, I don't know, eight, ten races that I, you know, was talking with him last year was real, you know, I'd be talking to Thompson. He'd kind of step in and real choppy, hey, how you doing? Yeah, you know, da, 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 walk off. I'm thinking, man, he's kind of hard to get to know. You get to know that dude, and that you talk about a heart of gold. I mean, just this big, gentle giant that's just, <laughs> I mean, he wants to help a new charity every week. And he's going to use his race. All the proceeds that car wins is going to be donated. That's awesome. I mean, that we, is a pretty cool a, deal. You know, we're going to need we're going to, we need some pedestals around here. You know, uh, there's a couple yeah. of guys that are really stepping up. They to, are. They are. It's pretty and, pretty, and pretty deal. deal. On top of what he did with the late model purse, and then going and doing a charity car now, dude. When he said, w- he, will he donate to the <laughs> send Joel to lunch fund <laughs> or <laughs> send Warren to Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> He, hey, uh, I'm a starving kid here. <laughs> so here, yeah, it, it was are. real funny how it came about. I'm on, I'm sitting there. It's like 9:30 at night. I'm, you know, just got home. I'm cruising around on Facebook, and I get a message, and I check it, and it's Drew Dibel, who I'm friends with on Facebook, and he says, "Hey, my dad wants you to call him." <clears throat> I didn't have his phone number, and he, then the phone number came through. I just hit dial, and it goes through, and he's like, "Whoa!" Dan says, "You called me pretty quick." I said, well, "I got a message to call you." <laughs> I didn't, you know. I, What's going on? He goes, listen, I've been sitting here thinking, and I've got this idea, and I think you're the guy that can help me out with this, but tell me what you think about it first. And he told it to me, what, you know, the idea that I just put out there, and I stopped and thought about it and went, are you kidding me? I mean, yeah. You're going to do that? I mean, I didn't know what to say. I said, how cool. I said, that is a gr- that's a great idea, and absolutely Moxie is in to help you, do, you know, to, to promote that deal and see if we can't raise those funds to, to help out a new charity every week. Uh, that's a lot of people. Yeah, you know, yeah. Dan mentioned the you know the the soup kitchens and <clears throat> and children's charities and just you know softball you know like organizations. I mean, he's he's just he's just there to help people, much like Brian Thompson. Brian Thompson, who is Brian. really good friends with Dan Dibel, does mm-hmm. a lot of the same stuff with the bicycle deal and you know giving back to whatever. I mean, we've Brian's seen, been awful quiet lately, but uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing from him. I guarantee you'll be hearing from yeah, Brian Thompson yeah, and, without a doubt. <clears throat> um. I just thought, you know, how what a great idea to use yep. your race car to help others in need. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So a big shout There's out to Dan Dival. A lot of organizations out there that can that can use all the contributions they can get. There is, there yeah. is, and, and you know, we're always and, willing. And they're to help all for out. good causes. They really know. are. Yeah. We're, we're 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 always willing to help out somebody that wants to do something like that. You bet. Um, neat deal. So we've seen the cars, <clears throat> oh, some of them, not all of them, and. We know race season's coming. First week, or for next week. First this practice. weekend, we're three days away. Does that make you nervous? No, it makes me excited. Yeah, I it can't makes not. me nervous. Oh, here, I'm And excited. I'm not even turning wrenches on a car this year, and I'm nervous. I know why he's nervous. Uh, I give up why. See, I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> there was like a Tuesday night or a Thursday night a couple weeks ago that we've... Uh, got this idea you know look hey look joel you're going to be helping me out a little bit this year you're going to be on the mic <clears throat> it's time to practice he goes what do you mean i said well you've never announced 
we've got to get you up to speed. We got Dan Dibble out of turn three. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we sat here, and I said, "Okay, now I want to hear you. Uh-huh. I want to hear you." We went to YouTube. We brought up a couple of heat races, couple of trophy dashes, and there were high points. And there were points, <laughs> <laughs> but how many how many no, points were there? There, there was the high points. I I thought you know in doing what we did, and he's only done it a couple times. You know, as far as the practice with the headsets, and the other part is hearing your voice. You know, you got to. Well, see, to I never knew there was any such thing as practice for announcing because you just put a mic in my face and said, "Here," and I got to make a fool out of myself. <laughs> Dude, that's that's how I got initiated with this dang show. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> so we we brought practice. up some videos. <laughs> we brought up some videos and went to work, and and it was great for introductions. Dude was on point, and then they started racing, and I'm thinking, "What are you watching?" <laughs> <laughs> he did he did pretty good he really did i mean all in all because i'll tell you something uh, this announcing thing is not something just anybody can do you you were made to do it this is uh joel and i we we, we have to work hard you guys I mean, can it takes do this. a lot of mental work to you guys can do this but you know in this is a conversation i got into last night with with another friend people stumble on themselves when they're trying to do something like this and they said, what, how do you do what you do so fast? I said, well, first of all, there's a lot of reading. Knowing the driver, knowing the car, knowing all the information. When you're looking at that car, you better know the driver, the chassis. You better know the, the sponsors, motor, The motor. You better know where they're from. Oh, the motor's <clears throat> easy. It's a Chevy. <laughs> you better know where they're from and at least some of their accomplishments. And sponsors. And sponsors. you got to know that stuff. Now, that's a lot of reading. Yeah. The biggest part about being an announcer. <clears throat> With you, it's just muscle memory, isn't it? Some of it. <laughs> Some of it, because a lot of the stuff carries over from season to season. Some right. of it changes. But taking notes during the season, <clears throat> reading your notes, reading the information they give you, following up with them every single week in the pit area. But right. the biggest thing, when you're in the box and you're on the mic and you're announcing, the bad announcers or the worst announcers are the ones that think. Well, you you got it easy then. <laughs> <laughs> but does this make sense? Does yes. this make sense? Yeah, it does. Yep. If you're thinking about what you're saying, and this, honestly, and I, uh, this like is like right only, now, right? I, if, you're, <laughs> if, if you're thinking about what you're saying, you're gonna stumble. <clears throat> I don't do that. I don't think. I just I. I well, we know. you've got that knowledge. You you you're very good at retaining well, and, all that information. But it's, that's, it's, that's not, it's something like when you get behind the wheel of a race car to learn how to drive one. Right. You don't just get in the car and set the world on fire. My first couple of nights of announcing was two of the worst, probably the two worst weekends of my life announcing because I just got <laughs> the day before of getting my wisdom teeth removed. <clears throat> and I was in a ton of pain. Ton of pain. Ton of pain. And I, yeah. <laughs> and I'm up there in the mic. I'm on the mic. My heart's pounding. My, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe I'm doing this. Taste of blood in my mouth, you know, my, my face is swollen. I'm trying to announce these races with Ben. And all in all, I mean, I guess I, I can't say I, I did great, but uh, I didn't think sure I did, did bad. But it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But like anything, it's learning. Um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of work to do, isn't there, Joel? Oh, it's insane. And, you know, that that's the biggest thing for me is I'm used to – when I was crew chiefing, I'm used to watching one car and what's going around, going on around that car. Absolutely. And then yes. when I work with Extreme, I get assigned a section of the track, which right, is right. my playground. I'm responsible for that section. Now, when I'm sitting here on a 12 inch screen staring at cars go around you, around you, around, I'm going, "Oh, this will be easy. I'm just staring at 12 inch." Uh, uh. Yeah. No. Things happen fast. Don't Things they? happen fast, and I'll sit there. I'm sitting there, and it's like Corey's sitting there. He goes, "Oh." Here we'll we'll start off with with sportsmen's. Those are easy. They're fast. <laughs> <laughs> then he goes. Then he sits there and he, you know. I think he. I didn't realize this is what he did, was doing, but now it all makes sense. Then he goes. Oh, we'll do modifieds. You know modifieds really well. Those are even faster. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes. Oh, you're ready for the big guns. Yeah. If you can if you can do a late model race with Rob May and Trevor Glasser, you're fine. We brought up an old trophy dash. Yeah. And that's when he started thinking. <laughs> yeah. That's when I was like, oh, I'm done. It was almost like watching somebody 
And I don't mean this in a bad way. No, no, no. I'm just razzing a little bit. But it's like watching somebody fall upstairs. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what? I did it gracefully. You did.